Welcome to the Big Fat Real Estate Checks Podcast with Marco Kozlowski, where we help investors like you get the knowledge and skills you need to replace your J-O-B with passive cash flow for life. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. This is, of course, Marco Kozlowski, your fearless leader in this series where we're going to be discussing all sorts of amazing things regarding to exploding your wealth using real estate as the vehicle to make cash flow, to have equity, to build wealth, pay less taxes, and a whole lot of other goodies. And today I'm joined in the studio with uh, Gabriel and Frank, uh, two amazing humans that have been helping me um, help others and be more efficient, uh, be better, and hold myself accountable. I hold them accountable to not only buy as many cash flowing assets as possible, but also help other people that want to learn these processes and be as efficient as possible in that process. So pretty excited for this episode. We're going to be talking about very common mistakes that people do make. Uh, There are so many that can be made. Um, A, not following process. Uh, B, uh, being too analytical and uh, not going through uh, as many leads as possible, not marketing properly, not using the right tools, using your own money. And man, there's so many mistakes that you could be making. It's, it's ridiculous. Trying to get to a yes too fast, not building an impasse and not having enough leads in your pipeline and uh, also believing whatever the seller is telling you. I've seen too many times someone comes, sends me a message, hey, I have this great deal. Uh, the gross is 300000 I ask what the net is, and they say it's two hundred and eighty thousand. There's no way that all your expenses can be only twenty thousand bucks on a property that makes three hundred grand. So, not knowing things is actually going to hurt you as well. So many ways we can go here today, uh, ladies and gents, uh, but we're only going to pick a handful of those. And throughout our journey together on this podcast series, we're going to add as many of those as possible. So, keep listening. I know you're going to get a lot out of it. So, uh, who would like to go first today? Uh, I, I can go first. Uh, my uh, This is Gabriel. And the due diligence part was something that uh, could have been a mistake for me. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of glad I followed the steps and researched properly before doing something. But uh, I got into a contract to buy a hotel and everything was going smoothly in terms of due diligence. You know, the seller provided all the items that we had asked for. Uh, started checking out revenue, making sure the revenues were were correct. Because in a hotel, revenues are, are are a driving force. And you know, as I was going through the process, I was getting ready to close on this, and I could it could have been a huge mistake because I don't know what happened, but I decided to take a look at the seller's tax returns, you know, one more time, make sure I didn't miss anything, and lo and behold. I couldn't, I couldn't make the net income add up to the one that was in the financial statements. And it was driving me crazy. And, you know, the seller was super, you know, honest, full of integrity, always provided answers to everything we had asked for. So I I didn't think it was the seller trying to, you know, pass a quick one. So I asked him the question, you know, why is this not matching up? And he's like, I don't know. And Checked up with his accountant, and it turns out that his accountant, who was supposed to do all this right, made made a mistake, and the actual reported income in the tax returns were the correct ones, and they were kind of they were almost half of what was in the financial statements. So that that could have you know a good deal or what I thought was a good deal turned out to be a terrible terrible deal, and had I not you know looked at this. Uh, I could have been in a lot of hot water. I actually, I would have been upside down, and that would have been terrible for everyone involved. So that could have been a huge mistake. And it, it, the mistake I did make was not catching it the first time. I got lucky that I went over the due diligence again. That's really what happened. So it wasn't as much me doing my homework as much as me doing it correctly the second time. So that that could have been extremely costly. Well, there's a few lessons there. Uh, You weren't married to the deal, which is what happens generally when someone finds or creates a deal. Uh, Another misnomer is you find deals. You actually don't find them. You create Mm -hmm. them. Everyone wants as much as they can when they first put the property on the market or are gathering offers. Everyone wants as much as possible. Uh, So understanding how to create deals is very important. A big mistake is not learning that process. Very important. 
um, you weren't married to it. You were not, this is, I'm going to buy it and I know the numbers are going to be good and this is going to retire me because it could have. It's, it was a million dollars plus a year in income on this thing. I remember it. Yeah. But you followed process, double checked, triple checked. And through that, you didn't make the, you didn't make the mistake of believing you know, what had to happen. You weren't just saying, yes, this is what it's going to be. And being, being married to doing a deal versus being married to doing the right deal that will take care of you. Because a bad deal is way worse than being married to two people at the same time that both want to kill you. It's, it, it's, it can be extremely stressful. Extremely stressful. It stings. So that's, that's something that you, you know, they have to understand that it, it does. It hurts because you spend a lot of time and effort on this, but it doesn't make it right to go through with something that's not correct. And to me, it was the best decision I made was not to buy it. Agreed. Francesco. This is Frank. I don't know about you guys, but this is going to be a very short episode. I got no mistakes. I make no mistakes. And that's my first mistake is thinking that I don't make any mistakes. (laughs) I had actually uh, quite a few. I don't know if you listen to other episodes, but one big uh, mistake that I was doing that many of you can relate to if you're listening to this podcast is... Uh, the fear, the reason we were, uh, we didn't pounce on, um, on the deal and we just gathered information. Again, I work for the government. I used to work for the government and everything is about contracts and agreements and so forth. So the reason I wanted to line up all my ducks, as you want to say, and get all the facts is because number one, I was looking for a yes, which we know if you listen to previous episodes is a big no, no, uh, part of Marco's process is you need two no's to get started. But most importantly, I was fearful if they did say yes that I was going to be stuck with it um, if I didn't perform. So, um, you know, the fear of, of, of getting sued or the fear of uh, losing my deposit. Um, I, I think that was the biggest hangup that I had. And that's why I was, you know, you know uh, gathering info um, more than I should about the property. Uh, so those three components, you know, looking for the deal as opposed to creating one, um, uh, gathering all the data, um, just for that fear that for, for me, I, I like, I'm buying it. So I want to make sure that, you know, when I buy, I, I know it's the right one. And, uh, and that fear of, of getting sued and not being performed or losing money. Uh, those are my three, uh, flaws that I had that I overcome, obviously. Thank you to Marco, uh, that I overcome, but it was, it was, it was, uh, it was a rough go, um, just to get over those hurdles. And again, it, it was ingrained in my head and most of it, most people are like that. That's the way you think. And to change and go against the green um, hurts a little bit uh, because you're not used to it. It feels uncomfortable. It's, it's, it's like putting on, you know, um, wet shorts or something like that. I don't know. Just not comfortable at all. Uh, but once you get it, you get that aha moment. And, and uh, that's when you flourish. And that's, that's, that's what I got to say about that. So when you peed your pants and it got wet and warm, but then it got cold, you went, ah, I think <laughs> once you hit 50, Frank, maybe that starts happening. Uh, I don't know, but, uh, you well, need some depends. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. I don't want to wear diapers, man. I don't think anybody, anybody does, oh. <laughs> but, uh, so let's speak real quickly on getting sued. If, if you use the right paperwork, will that ever happen? Gents? Nope. 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 No, nope. we know that now. Yeah. Yep. If you do too much uh, paralysis through analysis, uh, what happens? Oh, you lose the deal. You lose the opportunity to the deal, in fact. And if I can add on, on the agreement, I think the agreement, when it's properly structured, is the reason you can pounce because you don't have to be worried about what can go wrong. And you can't lose money. You can't get sued. There's no specific performance language. You actually tie up the property and hold the seller responsible for giving us what we need to do the analytics that we need to do in order to determine if it's a good deal or a bad deal, where most agreements don't have that language. It's based on time versus on actions of the seller. We could have a whole 10-hour series on on the agreement, and that thing has been organically growing uh, for the last 10 years at least. And keeps growing. And it keeps changing. Every month we add something else, tweak something. Uh, we get pushback from a seller that actually that's genius. You know, we should incorporate that, so on and so forth. So through our mistakes, we actually grow. So the mistakes that you both didn't make that I want to underline is giving up, which is the biggest st- stopper of wealth, I'll say. Because you started 
Gabriel, by buying a lot of properties terribly. Uh, you were upside down thousands of dollars a month. You bought properties at retail. Uh, you f- did what you thought had to be done as an accountant, and it was the completely opposite of what should be done, and you didn't give up. You knew that this was a solution, and by doing that, you were able to take care of yourself and your family and not have to work anymore. You're, you know, you're, you're in a good spot. Same with Frank. For eight months, he did it wrong. And instead of giving up, which, was, which is what a lot of people do, shit, I didn't see results for eight months, so this shit doesn't work. It's not the shit that doesn't work. It's your shit that's not working. You got to fix your shit and then you can flourish. So mistakes are part of the journey. So if you have the right guidance and the right GPS to course correct, someone either looking over you or even results not happening by itself is feedback. If you're doing something and it's not working, it's something that you're doing that's not working. It's not the thing that doesn't work. Everyone's in the real estate business. If you live somewhere, you're in the real estate business. You're either being paid or paying to stay there. Which side of the coin do you want to be on? Do you want to get paid or do you want to pay? It's, it's one or the other. So I think we covered mistakes, at least well, some of them. Anything think, to add, boys and girls? Yeah. I ladies do. and gents? Yeah, this is Gabriel. And I think there's one more I think huge mistake is uh, not getting started at all. <laughs> if you if you if you don't start, you won't make the necessary mistakes to get you to the path of success. So organically, it should be get started, make mistakes, uh, don't give up, and then you know use that GPS to course correct and get on the right path to success. And but but getting started is 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 the beginning. You have to do it. You have to get started. And it's sometimes it's a mindset issue, but that's something that you know we we've we've been able to help each other out with, and we we continue to do so because uh, giving up is something that always lurks in people's minds. Getting something, you know, becoming very difficult in a process. It, it happens to everyone at different steps of their lives. So, uh, but getting started is more important because if you don't get started, you won't have that opportunity to think about giving up and then overcoming that, that giving up feeling. Very good. So to recap, start, don't give up, follow process, course correct. Don't be afraid that something bad is going to happen. There's, if you follow process, nothing bad is going to happen. Deals are not found, they're created. Although even a blind squirrel can find a nut once in a while. You want process to get you as many deals as possible. And have fun along the way, I think. You know, don't take things too seriously. Have fun. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Don't put the FU in fun. Allow things to happen and to learn and, and be surrounded by people that make things enjoyable. You know, we want to have more fun in this life than we possibly can. And you can make a lot of money. In fact, you will make a lot of money. The more fun you have, the more joy you have in your life. One of the reasons I think Frank gave up his job is y- y- it was killing you. You know, you were even taking the stairs, I think. Uh, you know, so you avoided people in the elevator. Yeah, I just want to add on this. This is Frank here again. I just wanted to add on that. The mistake many people do. And, and it's, you know, it's it's... It's not because most of my friends and, and my colleagues from work, um, you know, I, I, I told people what I was interested in doing. This is like five, six years ago. And I was like, ah, I think I want to dab into the real estate and, you know, try that or whatever. And they're like, no, don't do that. Or the ones that know it all. Oh, I know a good realtor. So another mistake I didn't mention is don't necessarily listen to your friends that are not doing <laughs> what, you're, uh, what you're teaching, Marco. Um, because if you have one person telling you, oh, this is the way you do it, but they never did it, um, you're going to be going down a rabbit hole that you don't want to. And yes, I was avoiding uh, negativity. That's, that's, that's the reality. I used to work in a, uh, a I think it's a 20, 20, 22 story building. Thankfully, I was only on the ninth floor, but I would avoid each morning going into the elevator. Um, because you know, when I, when I, when I walked in in the morning and I, I say, Hey, Marco, how's it going? And then I hear a whole story. Oh, you know what? This is sucking, you know, another 10 years, six months and three weeks and 20 and, and three hours left for until I retired. And I was like, Holy shit. These guys are like down to the, down to the hour and like pissing away their life. They're waiting for those 10 years. That's a decade, by the way. Um, I can't even fan them five years or three years. That's a long time. 
So I, I avoided that because it was such negativity and I didn't want to be in that space. Uh, so I would literally take the stairs all the way to the ninth floor. And when I needed a break, or, you know, go downstairs and go upstairs. And I would avoid, you know, taking the elevator f- just for that reason, negativity. Um, the more negative, if you surround yourself with negativity, uh, guess what? You're, you're going to be negative too. Uh, so I guess that, that would be one thing to avoid um, in, in terms of mistakes. Be around positive people. Be around people that, like Marco, you're, you're very positive. I don't think I ever saw you angry. Shit, you get mad. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you have three kids, or four kids, forgive me. Um, I don't think I ever saw you upset. Um, you, you joke around, you're bubbly, and, uh, and, and that's good. That's what I want to be around. So you're only going to be just as good as the people that you hang out with. So if you're hanging out with a bunch of whiners and negative people, then guess what? You're going to become one. And if you hang out you know, with successful people and positive people, then it's going to rub off. Yeah. That's well said. Yeah. No better way to end this episode. Frank, thank you so much. Gabriel as well. Join us on the next episode where we're going to share with you the magic secret of success or something else really cool. If you like this episode of Big Fat Real Estate Checks, then show some love by leaving a comment and a good rating. Also, as a thank you for tuning in today, we've got a special free gift. The journey to passive cash flow for life starts by finding deals, and it's easier than you think. Simply go to getdealsbytuesday.com, enter your email address, and we'll send you a free quick start course called Deals by Tuesday. Even if it's 11 p.m. Monday night, This course will show you how to find discounted real estate deals by Tuesday. It's that fast and simple. Go to getdealsbytuesday.com and start your journey toward life-changing cash flow today. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode. Mm